Winston stops on a dime and buries the three. What makes him special? He has ability to go anywhere he wants on the floor when he wants to get there. Mike Schmidt of ESPN. We're here with Cassius Winston, a Michigan State point guard, one of the best players in the country in all of college basketball. Uh, Cassius, appreciate you taking the time, man. Uh, thanks for having me. It's, it's an honor. Yeah, so Cassius, I know it's uh, a little bit of a strange time, you know, for everybody, uh, given COVID nineteen and, and everything going on in the world. Uh, since the season ended, I guess what what have you been up to? Um, how have you been able to kind of stay fresh and polish your game? Uh, you know, we able to stay at East Lansing. Uh, we had a gym up here, so me and my brother kind of just get in the gym, work out every day. You know, just a constant little cycle. Make sure we get in the gym, get in our working, working on our body, try to stay as prepared as possible. Yeah, I think it kind of benefits you, uh, you know, the the upperclassmen who have a strong resume, right? Because you don't really need much of a pre-draft process to show people your game. They've seen it, you know, year in and year out. So what do you think it is that you can bring to an NBA team? Uh, I think my playmaking ability, uh, you know, not for myself, but for the people around me. I think that's one of my biggest skills. Uh, I, make, I make the players around me better. I get them, you know, better looks, open shots. And at the same time, I'm still a threat myself, so it kind of keeps things, you know, keep the team guessing and able to make, you know, to help us make plays. So is there anyone you watch in the NBA now uh, and say, maybe I could be that guy or anyone you watch and try to take little things from? Oh, yeah, a bunch of guys. Uh, I love watching Chris Paul, uh, how he works through the ball screen and make plays off the ball screen. Uh, Kyle Lowry, how he uses his body to kind of create. Uh, play at his own pace. Uh, guys like Kimball Walker, how they creative with the dribble, create space to make shots. Like guys like that, I watch a lot just to kind of you know, you know, maybe now you're not jumping around and running around people, but they're you know active with the ball, creative and crafty. Yeah, no, those are great guys for for you to watch and model your game after. You know, we have some some CP, we got some Kyle Lowry clips in here, so uh, let's let's dive right into it. We're gonna break down you know your ball screen game. I think. You're arguably the most polished pick and roll player in the draft, uh, just with your ability to do it, like you said, as a scorer, as a facilitator. I think a lot of that starts with, with your shooting ability as well, but um, just really, really crafty, man. And I, I've been impressed, you know, with your game over the years, and, and obviously love watching you play. So to me, it starts with your pre-screen work, like what you do before the ball screen comes, because you're one of the best at getting guys to run into screens, and, and that's where I think the Kyle Lowry, the Chris Paul stuff comes into play. Um, most guards don't really look at that type of stuff. Why, why are you so advanced at like making sure that uh, you get into the body or whatever the certain situation is? Why are you so advanced there and maybe other guys aren't? Uh, I think it's just, like I said, a, a focus on it. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm working out, uh, you know, when I'm working on my game, you know, it's been a, a huge emphasis on, you know, setting the ball screen up, you know, setting the ball screen up. And then finding creative ways to set it up. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like a, a lot of people say set up the ball screen. Like, the basic setup doesn't work all the time, you know what I'm saying? So, misdirections, change yep. of pace, uh, you know, things like that to get a player off his heels, off balance. So, once you, once you have that, then you have the advantage. Chris Paul, you know, he's got all the tricks, right? The misdirection, the footwork, everything, and we'll get into that. But just a little thing, just to show some similarities here. Um, you know, when he gets into the body of Austin Rivers like that, right, he runs right into the screen, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, using that body, forcing right into it. Yep, exactly. And then two on one, he can get to the mid range. He can hit the pocket pass. He's got all the options there. Um, and so when they try to weak you here, what, what are you trying to accomplish? Like you're doing everything you can to get to your right hand, right? Yeah, you know, trying to get to that over that screen around there uh, because I feel like that's the advantage. It's packed on this side of the floor, so yep. there's not much place to go. So if I get around that that screen, I'm able to kind of make the defense shift, make the defense you know, make some changes, and, you know, that's when you can make open reads and reactions. You do a great job of, you know, making sure that he runs into that screen, and now, right, what, we got the tag man who's got a tag on X, right? Yeah, yeah, so when you come off the screen, you know that you got two people on you. Uh, you, you can feel that you got the guy chasing you, and you know you got the big on you, too. So, you know, it just you read that that's that help man. You know, you read yep. the guys on the help side, and the, whoever, you know, eventually it's going to be an advantage for us because two are on me, so... You know, I play off his decision. Whichever one he takes away, you know, I, I got to be able to make the pass to the to the right man. Do you think that part of it for you was because you were never, like, the most athletic, quote-unquote, athletic guy? Like, you had to learn how to use your body a little bit more? Definitely. That's that's where it came from. Just, like I said, you want to play, you want to make plays. Uh, I want to make it as easy as possible for me. So, you know, if I got to use my body, if I got to use a, a dribble or a fake here to – you know, create the space where I can come off and have some freedom. 
you know, I'm going to do everything I can. So when I'm working out, when I'm working on my game, you know, you just you put yourself in that mindset. Like the setup is almost more important is what you do coming off the screen. So you just work on those things. Now against these drop coverages as a scorer, right? So when, when you're looking to score coming off, what's kind of your first read when you see that big, you know, drop below the free throw line or three point line? Uh, if it's below the three point line, I'm probably pulling it. That's yep. my first initial reaction. Uh, just cause if, if my man is gets a clean screen, then I know the big can't get to that shot. So I work on that shot all the time. If you know the big, I feel like if I'm coming off a ball screen, I feel like the big should be up, and if he's not up, you know, that just plays into my game of being able to shoot the ball. Uh, so working on shooting off the dribble, out the right hand, out the left hand, like whatever way, just able to knock that shot down, you know, at a consistent rate. And so, yeah, you're going to you're gonna really punish teams, you know, when they're in these drop situations, and, and Lowry's another guy who's become really good shooting off the dribble. And, again, very similar, right? He, he feels what I think that's Kemba getting into his body comes off tight, and just look at how deep, I think that's Biombo, look at how deep he is, right? Yeah, far back he is, yeah. You just so, once he's in that situation, it's almost like a two-on-one. Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure you get your man into the screen, and it's like you said, so it's a routine shot, it's a shot you work on all the time. Yep, simple stuff, nothing nothing too sexy about it, but, so you got the, the, the pull-up from three, and then you also got the mid-range too, right? Yeah, the same thing, like I said, you work on both of them, just be able to shoot, stop on a dime, uh, because if the big know you're going to shoot, he can get a hand up. So you're able to kind of come off, stop on a dime in a rhythm. I do a good job of having like a bounce into my rhythm shot. Yep. Uh, so that helps a lot being able to shoot out, out of that rhythm like that. For sure. And then you do a really nice job of, you know, whether it's uh, against an ice in the sideline or a middle ball screen, you're able to snake this thing, right? Take me through this. Uh, same kind of concept. Uh, just you, you make those reads you make off that situation. Uh, I think Cowan did a, a better job of being like behind me. I felt it behind my back. Yeah. So once that happens, you know the other side of that kind of screen is open, uh, and he's just playing that that little range. You playing that little moment, that little window that you got. Uh, play at your pace, at your rhythm. You know, it makes those type of shots a lot easier. Yeah, definitely. And you're just getting wherever you want on the floor because of your footwork. You're very precise with everything and. You know, I think you're a guy who, like CP, is going to kill those mid-range areas because of that. Now, I think the next step um, is, is getting downhill, right? Uh, what, do, what do you see here? Uh, almost that same kind of uh, concept. I, got, I think I got a little stuck right here. Yep. Uh, but, like, you see that space opening up. I, Gabe should have stayed down. I think he brought his man up, so it kind of tightened up that gap, too. Yep. But, you know, being able to create that. Like, you just want to create chaos, you know what I'm saying? When you get downhill create chaos, everyone has to shift, everyone has to move, and that's when the reads start to open up. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think you have the pull-up three, you have the mid-range, you have the snake. Now it's being able to play off of that, right, and, and then get mm -hmm. to your spots too. Mm -hmm. um, and they do a pretty good job, you know, keeping you in front here. And like you said, uh, Gabe kind of drags his man, you know, into the action, and then uh, that mucks things up a little bit. To whereas guys like Lowry, um, really good at that. What do you like about this? Ooh, that's cold. <laughs> that's cold. Just like that whole change of pace, like the, you got a guy out there that can shoot, the big got to worry about his man, you know what I'm saying? Like just yep. all those type of things, uh, the hesitation right there, that's just, that's all that's sweet. That's sweet. Yeah, man, smooth, man. And I think you got that too, uh, whether it's playing off of your pull up, getting downhill a little bit. Uh, take me through this. Uh, so it's like I had, he was almost in a drop like late to it. Yep. It's like a, I, I did a little, like a drop dribble just to like, create like a little like confusion, you know what I'm saying? Like he uh -huh. pauses for a second, I know what I'm gonna do. And then you just kind of play off that little area, you know what I'm saying? Drop dribble straight to the basket. He doesn't know if I'm gonna shoot it. He doesn't know what I'm gonna do with it. And then you just play off the angle, attack his hip. Uh, and, you know, you get everything. Once you attack the hip, you gotta open up. He can't foul. If he doesn't, he gonna foul me. So you gotta open up and you just work on your finish. Yeah, and I love the finish too, with kind of the same foot, same hand, right? Getting it mm -hmm. up quick. Mm -hmm. um, that's what you see from a lot of the best finishers in the NBA, and I know you got you got the floaters, you got all that. So, all right, we, we're talking about kind of basic drop coverages, right? You do a really good job scoring out of those. One other thing I love that you do is I call it putting guys in jail or, or keeping that guard defender on your back. Um, mm -hmm. Here, take me through this play here. Uh, little little rescreen. Action, make sure you set them up again, and then like almost a drop. Yeah. So when when the the big drops, you give him like a little time for my big to roll. So X is rolling. Yeah. So I want to keep my guy in jail mm -hmm. so that like it just creates so much more space because the big now has to make a decision. Like right here at this moment, the big doesn't have to make a decision because X is right with me. But if I hold mine's in jail and let him roll, yeah. Like I said, the big has to pick one, and that just opens up. If he backs up, I got a shot. If he steps up to me, it's a lot because he got he got to make a commitment.
So it's all about toying with that big, playing the two-on-ones, and make him make a decision that he doesn't want to make. Yeah, definitely. Put him in a tough situation where he's forced to make a decision, and I, I'm being able to make both, you know, fairly quickly. It just it helps, you know. Okay, whatever decision you make, I can just make the other at that moment. Exactly. Yes, and that and things like that. I think that's why you're arguably the best pick and roll point guard, you know, in the draft because of that. And again, Lowry is a guy. I mean, he'll he'll even wait for you, right, and then get into yeah, your body. Yeah, like I watch him a lot. And he'll like come back, like you know what I'm saying. Like he'll come go all the way to the free throw line and then come back to ice you, like almost like this. Yeah. You know, and it just creates that kind of space. And even a bump just throws the defender off guard. So now you get time to rhythm into your floater, like all the type of things where you don't have to be like jump over anybody like the bump throws him off the rhythm there's a bigger guard right here too if you bump him right there he's off and you can just step into a rhythm flow yep exactly and, and for all the talk about oh it's threes and layups like the best point guards in the nba they dominate this this these areas you know <laughs> yeah you gotta have a mid-range yeah you gotta have the mid-range gotta have the float game uh, that opens everything else up and, and i think mm -hmm. that's what's you know, made you so successful and then you can use this to open up opportunities for teammates as a passer too right yeah, definitely. Uh, just like I said, I'm controlling. So look at like it's three eyes on me because I'm yep. controlling in that in that little space. So if Henny needs a shot, hit Henny. Uh, uh, Malik had the open pass. He made a great pass right there. Yeah. Just everybody's so glued in on what you're doing because you're so tight. You got control of everything, and you just can make reactions off that in the Greeks. Yep. And get the hockey assist and keeping that live dribble like that, you know, mm -hmm. is it, huge. So then, as a as a playmaker, you know, in in these drop situations, as you're coming off here. Uh, what are you looking at, and, and what kind of leads you to make the decision to throw this lob here? Uh, anytime, if I'm coming off, anytime the big can get to the like the hip, yeah. Like somebody backpedaling, I'm throwing it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because so, the only way that that person could get it if they jump straight in the air and like do some freak athletics. Yeah, like, yeah. If you want to backpedal and jump it like you just you're not gonna catch it. So anytime my person Marky right here gets to the side hip and the person backpedaling, you just throw that to the rim and. You know, majority of the time, the offense will never make the play. He missed it this time, but I, I, I think I did a good job on the pass at least. Yeah, no, it's a good, it's a great <laughs> read. So you're saying once he can get past that big hip, that's when you know you can throw it up. Throw it right away. You know yep. what I'm And you throw it because it's just he has to react. And if you throw it off the dribble, like they don't know it's a lob coming. Like I'm dribbling it, so they don't know what's happening. And the ball is in the air, and next he's looking up at the air trying to find the ball. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yep. throw those off every time. And because I think you're right, and because you take that little extra dribble and throw it off the dribble, then that weak side tag, he doesn't know if you're going to throw the lob or hit the lift, right? Yeah, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He just, like I said, he, he's, he's, he's playing the guessing game. Yep, exactly. And so you're just manipulating those weak side defenders, you know, with your eyes. And uh, I, I was really impressed with how you were able to deliver the ball from all different angles, too. Bounce passes, um, really reading the defense without even almost knowing, like, where they're going to be. Um, take me through this play here. Uh, so this one, I came off. I knew I had two, and I saw the tag man leave X. You know what I mean? Like yep. Tag man didn't. He was going with the shooter. So I knew that. I knew X was open. I don't, honestly, I didn't. I don't think I saw exactly X open, but I knew that X had to be open. So I kind of, uh, you put it in the spot. You know what I'm saying? That's what we taught to throw it. That's what we taught to roll to. That's what, that's what we work on. So yep. you put it in that spot. Uh, and like I said, I knew that he was rolling, and I knew the guard, the, what's his name, didn't tag. And for Colin to get there, he would have to be all the way in the paint. Yeah. So you see all those things when you come off, and you're like, okay, X is open, and it's just about delivering. And like I said, you work on all those things. You watch film. Uh, you know that bigs can't really get to, like, the low bounce pass type. Right. Of, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just more difficult for them to get. If I was doing over overhead, if I was stolen. So just all those type of things you kind of learn as you play, as you, you know, watch, as you learn. Um, and then here again against the drops uh, drop coverage here um, hitting that weak side corner right uh, yeah what are you major, looking at here major, uh, I'm looking at the backside man you know uh, that corner man guarding Henny like once I come off I know I got two I saw the roll up guy go with the roll up guy so you just you're looking at that backside guy and you you're seeing his decision you know what I mean if he commits like it goes to the corner automatically if he doesn't it goes to the roll man and you, you play like that. Yeah, and the best guards make that pass. You know, the best guards can hit that weak side corner, whether it's one hand, two hand, on the move, um, and you have that for sure. So you've got pretty much the, the entire arsenal. All right, so we hit, you know, the drop coverages as a scorer, keeping guys in jail, and then as a playmaker, you know, being able to hit the roll man, being able to hit the lift, being able to hit that weak side corner, and you got all that in your game. Um, now, you don't see as many, like, hard hedges in the NBA. It's more drops, ices, uh, and switches. 
but still, I thought you were really good in those type of situations. Um, you know, here against Northwestern, not a great hedge, but um, you drag him out and, and you kind of do a nice job of, of, of lifting, little retreat dribble, and then hit the roller in stride, you know, off the bounce. Really, really impressive with that hook pass. Um, what are you looking at here that allows you to make that read? Uh, with the hedge, you know, you want to occupy those two people as much as you can. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, drag, drag them out, bounce back dribbles, uh, tagging the hedge. Like, you just want to occupy their time as much as you can to give your roller time to make that that space make that separation where defense have to react and then from there you kind of see that you see his back right to you you gotta just use the angle like i said those are little windows that you got to take advantage of yep no that's perfect and you guys have kind of that weak side exchange going on so he really should be tagging right there right above the free throw line he misses that and then the weak side tag you know is late there also so mm -hmm. um being able to make that pass and quick read man it's, it's really impressive uh and another thing you do a really good job of is if against these hedges if they're so high you can what? Just attack him, right? Yeah, you can get around the big. Like I said, a lot of people, uh, it's hard to go, go, you know, get up that high, hedge that hard, uh, do it perfectly every time. You know what I'm saying? So you get around them, and then once you get around them, like I said, it's just a, it's a disadvantage for the team. You just got to make those reads. Yeah, and being able to make that that accurate of a hit to the weak side going to your left, uh, that's, that's a really impressive read, man. And I think nine times out of ten, you know, that's going to be an assist. And then also just as a scorer, um, what do you see here? This is an impressive move. Uh, yeah, just like uh, he, he tried to, anytime my defender goes under, I feel like uh, I should be able to knock that shot down. So yep. he, he, he tried to go all the way around me and he tried to go under the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, so I knew that if I got behind X, like that's that was my pocket for my shot. And just like being able to kind of use that space to hit that shot, you know, he steps, goes, goes under the screen. I'm right behind X. So I'm going to try to knock that down. All right. So this is what you're going to see in the sideline and uh, mostly at the NBA, right? You're going to see a lot of these ices. What are they trying to do to you in these ice situations, and and what makes you so effective? Uh, so in the ice, they're trying to like just cut off your options. You know what I mean? So if you play straight up, you got refusals. You got you can come off. You could bounce back. Like it's just so many things that you can do off a, a regular ball screen. So in the ice, it's more like send them to the sideline, and that's all we got to play. So uh, in ice, you wanna especially if they're gonna play like an ice drop. Yep. You want to you you kind of want to drag that out so you get that space. And if you get that space, you got to pull up right off. Uh you got the you can attack the big because he's dropping. You got the ice. Uh it's just it it, it crazy like it turns it back into a regular ball screen. Yeah, most definitely. And, and here you're going to see kind of that quick pull up that we talked about earlier, right? This is what you're talking about? Yeah, like I said, just working on like that shot. Like that's one of those shots I seen Dame do. Like, he yep. does that like those type of things, so I work on it. Get, in my pocket, uh, you know, a lot of times, the, like, the guy follows you because you, yep. like, they just don't expect you to pull that up, so he's behind you, and he did a good job pulling away, but I'm, like, I work on the shot, so I don't shoot it to get fouled, I shoot to make it, and the foul happened, it kind of just happened. Yeah, and, and you made a lot of these, you know, the, this season, and, um, again, so I think that's a good first option as you're coming off in these ices, right? Kyle Lowry, uh, another guy who's, who's really good with that, now he creates a little more space, hops into it, but you can see how deep Steven Adams is, right? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, and just playing that like that working on that shot getting to that spot yep yep mm -hmm. simple stuff and then i think the next the next level is really snaking back to the middle right um and here's one of those yeah. situations where maybe you kill it right what do you see here uh definitely should have either kept my dribble or snuck it snaked it back to the middle like i had enough space for that i uh, just like i said picked up my dribble too soon got stuck uh and you know that hurts me so you know being more patient holding on to the ball a little bit longer, letting things pan out a little bit more, I think I'd have been all right. Yep, exactly. And But I think overall, as we'll see here, you know, you're really good snaking back to the middle uh, just because, you know, your ability to play angles, your ability to play at different speeds, and you never get sped up. And and this is perfect, just getting to your spot, right? What do you see here? Uh, same kind of thing. Uh, he, jumped, he bit on the, uh, like, me using the ball screen because they try to ice so hard. So you yep. can't, as ice, you're not supposed to let them get to the top. So you kind of play with that. Use that angle, and then once you get in there, it's almost like just the Chris Paul type of thing. Like you just yep. play at your pace, get to your spot, get to your rhythm, and knock the shot down. Like you're just not worried about hands or nothing. You worry about your shot uh, and making plays in there. Yep, exactly. And, and on that note, here's CP. He's he's maybe the king of this snake dribble, right? Getting back to the middle. Um, mm -hmm. And I just what what do you make of this move here? <sighs> That's nuts. <laughs> That's nuts. I wouldn't even think to do it. Like, I don't know. Like, to be able to go cross 
to your legs in the middle of the paint. Hey, that's just that's 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 tough. That's crazy. And then that pullback too, right? Just to create space there. I mean, to have that, I think it's so much about his base and his footwork and what makes him yeah, so effective, he, right? And, yeah, he got Aldridge on his toes, so like he's a, a bigger guy. You would think like in that tiny space, but he's so off balance that once Chris Paul gets to his shot, like Aldridge just he can't even jump because he's off balance from the cross. You know what I mean? So little things like that, you see, like you start to see, you watch for. It's like okay, moves like that, angles like that, like that's how you get your shot off, and you learn how to just keep getting your shot off. Yep, exactly, 100%. And so, all right, we've seen it against drops. We've seen it against hedges. We've seen it against ices. The one last thing I want to hit on before we get into the switches is you do a really good job of kind of, I call it the Gretzky dribble or, or probing along the baseline. You know, we've seen it from CP. We've seen it from Steve Nash back in the day, mm -hmm. Tony Parker. Um, take me through this play here. Uh, just like I said, just being patient. You yep. know what I mean? Like, if, it's, if you get far enough, like, defense has to react because you got the ball and everybody's going to react to the ball, so. Getting on that baseline, you know, before I would get there and I would like stop and pick up my dribble and get yep. stuck. And it got me in a lot of trouble. But being able to trust my handle, uh, trust what I can do with it, you just get down there. Everyone has to react. Uh, three guys on me, like somebody's open and be able to make that play. All right, the last the last piece to it, right, is switches. You know, you're gonna have some athletic bigs probably switched out onto you. Uh, what what's the key to your what's the first step of kind of your isolation package in, in those switch situations? Uh, just. Creating like a just get him moving, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if uh if it's a big is right there and like he's stable and ready and in his stance, like they they can cover more ground. So you want to get them off balance. You want their feet to be moving. Yep, 100. percent And being able to make these kind of hang dribble pull ups, right? Is what I'll call it. Just being able to play off of those hezies and right hand, left hand doesn't matter. There you create mm -hmm. space with a little bit of a step back. Um, that's great, man. Great feet, great hands, great touch. Big time shot there. Uh, and again, here's a similar situation. CP, Montrez Harrell switched out onto him. Uh, what do you like about this? That's, that's tough. That's a hard shot. That's yep. a hard shot. Just being able to play, you want to send baseline, the quick, like the hezzy into the step. Because yep. usually the hezzy, you think, okay, you're going to dribble again. And then the hezzy to a side step into a three, that's that's tough. And, and so, all right, we've seen the, the step back. We've seen kind of the hang pull. Uh, and then you, I think you have one of the better hezzies too, uh, playing off of this. Take me through this one. Uh, yeah, this is one of the, I know he was thinking about the shot clock. He was on the island, like all those stuff got to go through your head. Yeah, and like I would shoot that shot. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to think like the heavy, like a heavy three. I would shoot that shot. So you just kind of play with your eyes, your feet, the tap. Like it, it just like if he bite, like he gonna bite. If not, you still can get back into your move. You still can make something happen. So playing with that heavy, you know, I love that. I love that move. No, it's a big time move, man. And he's a younger guy, but one. Of, the guy I think has one of the best hezzies in the game that I've seen is Darius Garland. Have you have you watched him much? I see. I I seen some of his highlights stuff. He's crazy with the ball, like just his ball handling, his ball skill, like being able to do those, play with that rhythm, like all those type of things is, is hard to do. You appreciate those too. So again, yeah, you've been studying. You've definitely been studying the the right guys. You know that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you yeah. can see that same level of craft. And then you know I think the last piece, like we touched on earlier is you're going to be in the trees against some, some bigs with some size and being able to have touch shots like this, right? Yep, yeah, hitting those quick ones, just you know, being able to get that ball on the rim, not having touch, uh, making shots like that is a tough shot. Yep, and, and to finish it up here, here's you doing exactly that. Uh, you remember this play? Yeah, definitely. Slaughter with the right off the glass or uh, on net. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was nice. Like yeah, just playing with the angle. Like I, I felt him <laughs> jumping in front of me for the block because yep. maybe thought I was going to shoot with my left or something, so just being able to chain it over, still keep my eye on the rim. I had that touch, like I said, just working on my game. Yep, and you have all that craft, man. And so I think uh, you're, like I said, one of the most polished pick and roll players, you know, in the draft, one of the most polished players, you know, in general, uh, just because of your ability to do it in ball screens against all these different coverages. So what has your contact with teams been like, and how do you kind of get a sense for your draft range with all going on? Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know what my range is. Uh, I, I'm just going to, when somebody calls my name, I'm going to be ready. Yep. Uh, but I've talked to a lot of teams. I have pretty good feedback. Uh, a lot of teams like my game, like who I am as a person, uh, like things I can contribute. So, you know, it's just a matter of what team likes me the most and when they like me, I guess. But I'm, 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 I'm looking real good right now. I'm feeling good. So I'm looking forward to it. And the last question here before I let you go. So, you know, there's been a lot happening in the world, obviously, aside from just COVID, you know, I mean, uh, I think the Black Lives Matter movement has been tremendous, you know, kind of uh, 
moving that whole movement forward and, and starting a conversation that's been needed to you know that's needed to been had for a long time yeah. um what do you think your role as an athlete can be uh, to continue kind of this progress and make sure that it doesn't stop here uh just to make sure that it doesn't die you know what i'm saying keep awareness uh keep having that conversation keep pushing for changes you know getting people to vote uh all these type of things that we can do because i have a platform i have a voice that you know, people listen to. So if I have one, I'm going to have to use it. And I'm going I'm to do that every time. Great, man. No, Cassius, I, I think you're a, a great role, role model for young kids, you know, coming up and, and for guys who maybe aren't going to be a one and done, right? And who aren't going to step right in the league right away. Uh, I think you're pretty much the perfect model to, hey, you can go get better, you can win some games, and then you can be ready to help an NBA team right away. So yeah, uh, sure. I appreciate you taking the time, man. Really, it's been great to chop it up and talk hoops. So best of yeah, luck to you with yeah, everything. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.